Chapter 26 Healed with Love Or Something More What are you doing? Phil pauses, glancing over his shoulder to find Techno hovering by the doorway of this little shed he's in. He leans back on his knees, pulling his attention away from the dusty shelves in front of him. Looking for tools? He answers, grinning. Tools for what? Techno persists, leaning his weight further against the doorway, almost to the point where he's practically slumping against it. Phil wonders if he's going to slump right down to the floor. Gardening? Phil answers again. He looks back at the mess surrounding him. The shed isn't a big thing. Not at all. But he was never much of an organized person. Even when this place was still in good use, he never did quite put away his stuff as neatly as he used them. He supposes he's always been more intricate with his creations, rather than the storage of the tools used to make them. There's a thick layer of dust over everything in this place. Although Phil's wiped a good part of it off with an old cloth from his bedroom, it still needs much more cleaning. Spiderwebs are scattered across the corners of the walls. The hinges of his chests squeak and jam when he tries to push them open. And he's fairly sure he spotted a bird's nest up on his higher shelves. Age has taken its toll. And Phil would feel a sense of sadness with it. But it's hard to be depressed in any kind of way when his techno is right there within view. Gardening. Techno repeats. Phil, humming, and glancing around the room for a moment, before looking back at him. Where are you going to make the garden? What are you going to garden? What tools are you looking for? What's... do you want to help me? Phil cuts him off, sounding a little amused. You know, I thought you were playing with your brothers. He holds out his hand, turning towards Techno properly. Wilbur's with Tommy. Techno shrugs, and he steps inside the shed, grabbing onto Phil's hand and letting himself be tugged a little closer. They're out in the shade. And you just wanted to come bother your old dad. Phil squeezes Techno's hand with a teasing tilt in his voice. And Technoblade huffs. He squeezes Phil's hand back. I wanted to see what you were doing. He corrects. But there's a slight red in his cheeks that Phil knows he was just hoping for Phil's company. It's sweet. I'm looking for gardening tools. Phil says after a moment, letting go of Techno's hand to search through the shelves in front of him again. Like a hoe, a shovel, maybe an axe too. You're going to cut down the trees? Techno asks, walking away from Phil to go fiddle with the chests around them. No, but I think I'll have to cut through something. Phil pulls a crate out from the shelves. Looking inside, and finding a collection of what looks to be empty flower pots. Hmm. Maybe he can put these to good use soon. He puts it to the side. I have a spot for a garden past the tree line. I used to use it all the time, but it's no doubt overgrown now. It's probably filled with weeds. Technoblade states. And he yanks with a grunt at one of the lids of a chest, trying to tug it open. Phil turns to him, meaning to help, but he's got it by the time Phil stood to his feet. Phil helps push the lid all the way back, as Techno leans to look inside, and there is a mess of supplies haphazardly placed around. This chest seems to be his fishing chest, considering the few fishing rods he sees sitting on top of the pile. There's hooks and jars and fishing line, and an old net somewhat folded up in the corner. Boring, Technoblade mutters, and Phil laughs. Maybe we could go catch some fish later with this, Phil suggests, reaching inside the chest and looking through it a little more. Techno just makes an unimpressed noise. It could be fun. Just stab the fish. Techno leans against Phil's hip with a shrug. That's easier. Not quite. Phil hums, 
thinking of the river nearby and the pond it leads to. That's a far walk, but he's sure Wilbur would like it. Maybe he'll take them down to it later on in the week. He closes the lid and moves on anyhow. Techno walks away from him to the next chest, this one a bit smaller, with a latch over the front of it. What's in here? Techno asks, trying to undo the latch, his nails fumbling against the metal. Phil sighs fondly, and goes to help with it. The lid creaks a bit as it's pushed up to show a collection of arrows. Phil goes still with surprise at the sight of it, and Techno makes a curious noise, trying immediately to grab one. Phil catches onto the fabric of his sleeve, lightly pulling Techno away. Ah, ah, don't play with these. You could hurt yourself. Phil faintly remembers dipping quite a few of these in potions, and while he's sure the effect has worn off after all these years, he does not want Techno accidentally touching poison. But they're arrows! Techno whines like it's just the coolest thing, and Phil's not being fair. He pulls his arm away, leaning into the chest with wide eyes. Where's the bow? Can you shoot him? I'm not sure where the bow went. Phil reaches down towards the arrows, pulling a few and checking them, before settling on one that looks normal enough. He pulls it completely out of the chest, lifting it in the air and checking it over before handing it to Techno. Careful. I'm not going to stab myself, Techno says. But he then goes to tap his finger on the sharpened edge of it, and Phil clicks his tongue like a scolding. Techno pulls his hand away from the pointy bit. You sure about that? Phil grins. And Techno waves the arrow through the air, looking up at Phil with a scrunched nose. Don't make me take that from you. You cut yourself, you're not getting it back until we find the bow. I got it. Techno insists. He walks away from the chest wandering through the space of the shed and turning the arrow over in his palms. He looks at it like he's considering something, like he's gotten an idea. Do you want to learn how to use these? Phil asks, crossing his arms over his chest. Kinda. Techno shrugs, hand hovering over the pointy bit again. He doesn't dare touch it, lest he wants Phil's scolding click pointed at him for a second time. I don't know. I like my sword. You can do both. Phil encourages. Yeah. Techno hums, holding the arrow up like he's comparing it against the dim shine of the sunlight. I gotta show Wilbur this. He declares, and he then looks back at Phil like he's waiting for him to lead him outside. Phil laughs under his breath. All right. He ought to go check and see what his other two boys are doing anyhow. He closes the lid of the chest and takes Techno's held-out hand, walking them outside. The sun is bright in the sky. The rain from the day before has passed and gone, and it leaves them only with a nice warmth over everything. There's a gentle wind blowing through the air, rustling the leaves of the trees around them. But other than that, it's calm. It's a good day for work, Phil would think, which is why he was trying to find his tools. Unfortunately, he's gotten distracted. He's not so upset about it. Him and Techno circle around the corner of the house, Phil glancing past the open front door that's letting the breeze flow in. Skeppy and Bad had been taking measurements, last he checked. Before they build anything on this little house, they ought to make sure it's planned properly. He hopes they start fairly soon. It'd be good to be done before the fall hits too harshly. For now, they have the summer heat beginning to wash down upon them. Techno seems to like it. Phil's found him sunbathing out on the grass more than once, like some sort of lizard. He always looks content during those hours in the sun. Although, when he does have to come inside, 
He's always half asleep. Phil thinks the warmth makes him drowsy. All Techno says is that the sun is nice and warm, before, usually, crawling into bed and passing out. Wilbur's not so inclined as to follow Techno's habits. The boy seems to, frankly, hate the heat, and always takes to the shade nearby whenever Techno goes to sprawl out in the grass. Phil can't even begin to count the amount of times Wilbur's complained over actually melting because of the temperatures outside. Only for Phil to respond that, No, you are not turning into juice, that's your sweat, Will. Will always disagrees. He tells Phil that he's going to turn into a puddle one day. And Phil tells him he'll be sure to collect him into a cup. Techno had always found that hilarious. As they walk, Techno takes the lead and starts pulling Phil into a certain direction, seeming to know exactly where his brothers are, amongst all the trees and their shade. Phil looks around, trying to spot them around the tree line, and he hears Wilbur before he spots him. There's a soft singing that's echoing through the air, a song that Phil doesn't recognize. It sounds fond full of hope and love, like a lullaby. And his footsteps falter for a second, before Technoblade tugs him to keep walking. Wilbur's not facing them as they walk up. He's sitting with his back turned against them, Tommy sitting in between his arms and legs. His singing is slow and steady against the quiet wind. And as their footsteps rustle the grass, Will's voice tapers off, he turns around, seeing them walk up and giving a sheepish sort of smile. Well, aren't you a little songbird? Phil says, Wilbur's face flushing as he gives a short laugh. He squeezes Tommy closer against his chest, and Tommy yells loudly, as if to announce his presence and make Phil look at him too. Hi. Will greets and Techno collapses down beside him as Phil kneels down to take Tommy into his arms. I've got something, Techno says, sitting down with the arrow held behind his back. Phil watches curiously as he holds Tommy tightly, feeling the kid grab at the front of his shirt. It's Phil's. Okay. Wilbur trails off, trying to look around Techno to see his hands. What is it? Techno brings it out, holding it carefully like it might explode. Wilbur freezes. He has a bunch of them in his shed, Techno explains, and Will jerks his head up. I was thinking... He leans forward, voice going hushed, and Phil intends to listen in, except then Tommy begins to chew on his shirt, and that catches most of his attention. Stop that. Phil huffs, trying to tug Tommy off. What are you doing? Bah. Tommy responds rather eloquently, and Phil snorts. Bah. Sheep, he says, and Tommy scrunches his nose like he understands that. You're just a miniature sheep with little wings. Bah. He leans down and taps his forehead against Tommy's, feeling his tiny wings flap behind him. Bah. Tommy repeats, his tail whacking against Phil's arm. Bah. Sheep. Phil repeats, but it's so, so fond. Dad? Wilbur says, and Phil looks up, finding that the arrow has been moved into his hands now. Can I learn how to shoot a bow? Phil blinks. If that's what you want, mate. He smiles, Techno seeming to beam with the response. It rubs off quickly on Wilbur. We'd have to make you a bow first, though. Why not just find yours? Techno asks, tilting his head. That's going to be too big. Phil answers, 
turning Tommy so that he's facing away from his chest and will stop trying to bite his shirt for attention. I'll have to find mine to teach you, but we'll make your own soon. Maybe Techno can try it out too. I like my sword. Techno repeats, seeming set on that idea. You can do both, Tech. Phil chuckles, Wilbur fiddling with the arrow in his hands, and seeming warily curious. Just like Techno, he taps his finger onto the edge of the pointy bit. Phil clicks his tongue sharply, and Wilbur immediately drops the arrow into the grass, pretending as if he never did it. Ah. Tommy tries to reach a hand out to it, Phil leaning him away so he won't be able to grab it. No. Nope. Both Will and Techno say at the same time, frantically going to take the arrow out of range. Phil laughs, and Tommy gives an unhappy kick of his legs. No bows for him until he's... he's... Wilbur stammers, trying to think. Fifteen. Fifty. Techno changes, nodding wisely. Fifty. Wilbur repeats, Phil snorting. That's a long time. Phil rests his chin onto Tommy's curls. I don't think he's going to want to wait that long. Well, he's gonna. Will scoots closer, holding out his hands and letting Tommy grab onto his fingers. No weapons for you. Me and Techno can have the weapons. You have those teeth anyway. Teeth? Phil repeats, and he pulls Tommy away, looking closer and adjusting his mouth. Tommy whines, trying to bite his fingertips. Oh, you've got little fangs! Phil exclaims upon seeing peaks of white coming through. The pride in Phil's voice is obvious, so much so that Tommy catches on to the shift of tone. He looks up at Phil with a laugh, and Phil laughs back, kissing him on the cheek. Little, little fangs, Phil says, kissing him again on the side of his head. Tommy screams with his hands waving wildly. You're a little sheep with little fangs. They're pointy. Techno throws out like it's important to know. He grins at Tommy making a giggle. They're bitey. Wilbur frowns, tugging at his sleeve. There's a little bite mark on his wrist. He tried to eat me this morning. Well, that's not good. Phil sits Tommy down on his leg, leaning forward to look at Wilbur's arm. It's not terribly bad, just a little scratch, which Phil is sure he'll heal fine from. But Tommy shouldn't be teething on people, especially if his teeth are going to be sharp. We'll find something else for him to chew on. Hmm. Techno thinks for a moment, head tilted back to the branches above them. He can chew on rocks. Will supplies. Techno looking at Wilbur like he's an absolute genius. Phil sputters. What? No! Why not? I chewed on rocks. Look at my teeth. And he opens his mouth, sticking his fingers in between his mouth as if to point specifically at the sharp ones. Very sharp. Take your hands out of your mouth, Will. Phil huffs. And no more chewing rocks. I don't do it anymore, Wilbur protests. Mostly. What does it taste like? Techno asks, crossing his arms. Dirt, but cold. And also like a stone taste. Stone taste? Like when you lick a wall? I haven't ever licked a wall before. You should. No one is licking a wall. Phil cuts them off before they start talking about eating sand and gravel again. Heavens forbid. Come on, we're working on the garden today. Garden? Wilbur asks, getting up as Phil stands to his feet. He helps Techno stand, too. We're making a garden? More like fixing one. Phil shrugs one shoulder, and he adjusts Tommy in his arms. The kid, once again trying to eat his shirt. Me and Techno were looking in the shed for the tools. Come help. 
but it's hot, Wilbur complains, watching Phil walk away. Techno grabs him by the hand and begins pulling him away from the shade. I'll die! You'll be just fine, Phil reassures. And Wilbur whines and despairs the entire way towards the shed, Technoblade practically dragging him by the time they get there. They find the tools after some trial and error, with Phil having to stomp on a terrifyingly large spider, Wilbur almost getting his hand stuck in a jar, and Techno getting a face full of dust. Phil really needs to properly clean out that shed. After sorting the tools out in a bag that sits comfortably at his hip, he pokes his head into the house and tells Skeppy and Bad to hold the fort down until they come back. Bad had been in the middle of marking out areas in the wall when he waved them goodbye, so Phil thinks they'll be plenty busy while they're gone on a little trip. Maybe by the time they're back, Phil can begin helping with the construction planning too. All right, are we ready? Got everything? Phil asks, coming down the steps of the porch and seeing Techno wrangling Tommy in his arms. Tommy's trying earnestly to grab handfuls of Techno's hair, and Techno is leaning back as far as he can, so much so that it looks like he's going to be falling backwards into the grass. You got him, Techno? Yeah. Techno chokes out, a little strained from how he's leaned back. He adjusts Tommy in his arms, Tommy giving a squeal. I can do it. Don't drop him. Phil warns lightheartedly. And Techno holds on even tighter, Tommy kicking his tiny legs. I got you. Techno says, but it's murmured, only for Tommy's ears. Tommy reaches a hand back to grab onto Techno's hair, this time gathering a handful with success. Techno huffs over Tommy's head, deciding to let him have his way. Tommy won't be yanking it out of his scalp. Probably. So where did you put the garden? Wilbur asks, looking at the forest around them, turning in circles like he's waiting for the path to reveal itself to him. The path we came up is over there. He points to the trees across the house. So the garden is... Over here. Phil points towards the left of the house. Wilbur turning his head with wide eyes. He runs in that direction. Techno following at his heels. Phil follows with a steady walk, laughing under his breath. I should put signs out on the paths, just to make sure you boys don't get lost. Phil says, mostly to himself, as an idea. It's only two paths. Wilbur says back, his footsteps slowing when he realizes he's leaving Phil behind. He walks to the tree line with his hands over his eyes, keeping the sun off his face. I can remember those. I have more than two paths, mate. Wilbur whips his head back at that, stopping in his tracks. Techno walks ahead of him, searching for an opening past the trees. What? Phil snickers. I lived in the forest for a while, Will. I wanted to branch out. He grins, and Wilbur narrows his eyes with a deep frown, glancing up at the branches over his head. You're lame, Dad. Techno drawls, but Phil can see the barely held back smile on his face. Victory. If you made other paths, then where do they go? Wilbur asks, crossing his arms over his chest and walking forward as Phil catches up. They probably got swallowed up by the trees. Phil shrugs, looking around. This place grew a lot while I was gone. No, where do they lead to? Wilbur corrects. Like, why did you build them? I found it! Techno calls, staring down at the ground and finding a cobbled path at his feet. It's practically covered in grass and flowers. You need to clean this, he says, looking up at Phil. I need to clean a lot of things, Phil sighs, 
Wilbur looking down at the path with interest, and hopping forward like a bunny rather than walking. He hops from stone to stone, and Phil's heart feels warmth with the silly sight. And, Will, this path goes to the garden, like I said. The one we came up through leads out of the forest. I have another that leads toward the river. Wilbur almost trips on his next jump, stumbling over a root in his way. He looks over his shoulder at Phil. You have a river? He asks, eyes wide open with surprise. And you didn't tell me? I'll take you there soon. Phil reassures. You saw me melting. The sun was killing me and you didn't think to tell me we have an amazing river nearby? Wilbur stomps his feet onto the path underneath him, pointing a clawed finger at Phil. Traitor! Phil only laughs. You're not going to die from a bit of sun, Will. We can go over there tomorrow morning, yeah? You can swim before the afternoon hits. Wilbur's fins on his head seem to perk up with the promise of that. He hums, the very sound nearly vibrating through the air like an echo out of a cave. Phil tilts his head, blinking a bit. Okay, but you're coming in the water with me, Wilbur says, his lips tugging into a smile. Sure, mate. And you too. Wilbur hops over to Techno, lowering his head to the baby in his arms. You should learn how to swim, Tommy. Like a fish. A little, little fish. Ah, ba ba ba. Tommy responds, Wilbur nodding like it's an agreement. Yes, absolutely. We're going swimming tomorrow. Hmm. Techno groans a bit, looking hesitant. What if it's cold? Then you will be cold, Wilbur responds, ruthlessly. You can sit by the edge of the river, Tech. You won't be far. Phil suggests, and Techno's worries are quelled by that. Maybe you can find a nice spot of sun to sit in. Lizard, Wilbur mutters, but it's nothing cruel. Just a tease. Lizard, brother. I'm a piglin, Techno corrects. Lizard. Wilbur circles in front of Techno, walking backwards so he can face him. I used to always see lizards sitting in the sun. And where do I always see you? In the sun too. Therefore, lizard. If I'm a lizard, then Tommy's a lizard too. Techno protests, lifting up the baby as if to prove his point. He's got a tail and everything. Oh no... Wilbur groans, holding his hands to his face. I have lizard brothers. I don't want lizard brothers. Phil laughs at the pure despair in his tone. Join us. Join us. Techno coaxes, holding out Tommy like a form of persuasion. You have scales already. You can be a blue lizard. I don't want to be a lizard. Wilbur yells, running to Phil. Dad, tell him I'm not a lizard! He pleads, slamming into Phil's side and digging his hands into the fabric of his shirt. Phil rests a hand over his curls. You called him a lizard first, Will. Phil points out. And Wilbur gives a dramatic, crying wail. Tommy copies it, not a second later. The garden is about as rough as Phil thought it'd be. It's entirely overgrown. More like a jungle of vines and leaves rather than a garden now. There's no sense of organization, only plants crossing over each other and hiding away the path that was carved out so long ago. Phil, faintly, remembers having fences here. They are no longer visible. Wilbur and Techno immediately head to explore, hands held tightly together, as they climb over the greenery to see if there's anything of interest. The sun shines down on them both as they run and step carefully, and Phil calls out to them before they get too far. Don't run out of sight, he warns, and they give a vague noise of agreement. Techno cackling 
when Wilbur trips over a root and crashes into a pile of leaves. And be careful of bugs. Wilbur shrieks. Tommy, who's held securely in Phil's arms, a clawed finger stuck into his mouth, looks interested at all the new scenery. He stares at Will and Techno getting caught up in their own shenanigans, and then turns to Phil, blinking up at him until Phil looks back down. Bah. Tommy says, and Phil huffs, raising a hand to pull Tommy's finger out of his own teeth. Sheep, he says, before pausing. A little sheep. More like a lamb, really. Hmm. Tommy rests his head against the curve of Phil's neck, grabbing onto the collar of his shirt. You're a lamb, Phil decides, nodding to himself before placing a kiss onto Tommy's forehead. Tommy gives an annoyed noise. A lamb with dragon wings. There. Bah. Phil walks forward, stepping carefully through the mess of growth in an effort to find a place to start. That's how lambs sound. Bah. Ah. Exactly. Phil nods, grinning wide. That's you. He looks around, trying to recall the layout of this place. How, exactly, he had sorted it all out. He knows he was rather neat, before. It's hard to even tell he's put years of work into this place now. He pushes aside a bush when his foot grazes against something solid, and he finds a peak of wood. Upon a closer inspection and kicking the leaves away, he finds a tree trunk, with the top being smoothed out as if it was once used as a little table. There's a pair of rusted shears sitting in view. He blinks. Picking them up, he lifts it into the sun to see it properly, and feels a slight sense of nostalgia with it. How many times had he used these? How many times did he walk around with these in his pocket, still busy with projects, busy with needing to distract himself? That was so long ago. Back then, when he was just a lonely avian in the woods, building a quiet little life, Back then, when he was not yet aware of the hopeful future that was on his path. Phil glances at Wilbur and Techno, finding their heads barely poking out from a mess of leaves, the two of them digging through the dirt, no doubt looking for bugs. Part of him knows he's going to have to go make sure they're not eating any. Part of him feels so glad at seeing them there, buried in the remnants of a place he once loved. Well, he still loves it. Even if it's not nearly as pretty anymore. We've got lots of work ahead of us. Phil murmurs, dropping the shears onto the ground beside the tree trunk. Ah! Tommy screams, his wings flapping enthusiastically upon seeing a bird fly over their heads. Phil watches it go, and laughs with the sight. Birdie he says, just for something to say. He puts Tommy down on the tree trunk, letting the kid sit up on his own. Here, stay right there, don't fall. Tommy's tail flicks back and forth through the air, whacking against the old wood behind him. He looks around him at the drop off the trunk, like he's considering crawling off to fall into the leaves. Phil holds a wary hand out as he pulls off his bag, quickly searching for his axe. With the years that have passed, with his tools being put away, Phil had assumed, at first, that everything of use would be rusted by now. Too old or corroded to be of any use. Fortunately, though, past Phil had made mostly everything with the intention of having it last for a long, long while. Such is the mindset of someone practically immortal. Phil's axe has dust dug into the crevices of its handle, but there's not a speck of rust on its blade. There's no cracks, no worn-down edges, only a faint, slight shimmer of an enchantment. 
and a tiny scratched-out word in the metal, of a language that's since been lost to time. Phil brushes his palm over the side of the axe, trying to wipe away the feeling of dirt. This isn't the most convenient thing to use, honestly, but it's what he's got. He's not feeling up to cleaning that old shed anyway. He looks back up at Tommy, finding him leaning dangerously close to the edge of the tree trunk, looking enraptured by everything in the dirt below. Phil quickly goes to pick him up, resting him against his hip. You're just a curious little lamb, aren't you? Phil asks, and Tommy doesn't take his eyes off from the ground. He reaches a hand out towards their feet, trying to get to it. I should have brought something to keep you held against me, or at least a toy. Tommy doesn't seem all that bummed by it. Phil hums. All right, all right. He puts Tommy down, watching as Tommy immediately digs his small hands into the dirt, screaming with delight. I'm going to have to give you a bath after this. Phil smiles, and Tommy pays him no mind, looking as if he will now put all his existing energy into digging a hole. Phil works on clearing out the area around him for the time being. He cuts away at any overgrowth around him, making an open spot around him and Tommy. Tugging out the plants, root and all, he reveals the soft dirt underneath, and with it, the traces of life that comes with the wild. There's bugs, and ants and beetles, and even what looks to be a little mouse underneath the leaves Phil pulls aside. Phil looks on with curiosity, shooing them off when they don't move. Although, more often than not, they all go running the second Phil moves anything. Skittish little things. His sleeves keep falling around his wrists as he works, so he folds them past his elbows and ignores the way he's left a bit of dirt stained onto the fabric. Everything can wash out, eventually, he tells himself. However, he supposes he could have come here a bit more well-prepared. He's not properly dressed for this. He blames his impatience. He really just wanted to see how it was, after all this time. And how his kids would like it. Can't blame a guy for wanting to know how his children would settle into a place that used to be his life for so long. So far, from what he's seeing, Tommy's having the time of his life within the piles of dugout dirt. And Techno and Wilbur are exploring around the garden, holding sticks like their swords. He thinks he can hear them talking about royal titles and knight oaths. It sounds like their usual sort of game, the ones they always played while traveling on the way here. And the familiarity makes Phil's heart squeeze. He smiles with the background noise of them playing. He tears out vines and branches and bushes and throws them off to the side, where he knows his garden doesn't reach. He clears away the overabundance of out-of-control plants and wonders if he'll be able to salvage any of this. Part of him knows he could. Part of him just wants to start all over again, like a blank slate. Maybe he could try sneaking down to the town, gathering some seeds from there. It's what he did before. But then again, before, he wasn't quite this sought after. Maybe he'll send Skeppy instead. That man has better luck with the townspeople, and Phil can't risk being seen. He'll wait a good decade before even thinking about heading out again. And when the time does come, he knows he'll be hidden properly by then. His axe seems to glow the more he puts it to use. And by the time a good hour has passed, with the sun warm on his skin and his palms covered in dirt... The tool is practically humming in his hands. Just barely, like a soft whisper in the wind. Phil holds the thing up to his ear, intrigued. But even with being closer, he doesn't hear anything more. Strange. Magic is a strong thing, but he doesn't recall his tools ever actually humming. Maybe his memory isn't serving him well. Maybe they did that all along and Phil didn't notice. However, 
there's a loud crash and shriek from behind him, and Phil whips his head up, already halfway on his feet before he's even called. Dad! Techno yells, Wilbur groaning loudly in pain. Dad! Coming! Phil says, quickly making his way over. He leaves Tommy where he is, knowing full well he'll be fine just a couple feet away. What happened? Are you all right? Wilbur's not, Techno says, voice sounding slightly shaky. Phil finds them in the mess of growth. Wilbur sprawled out on the ground with pieces of broken fence underneath him. Ah, so that's where his fence went. Hidden underneath the leaves. I'm okay. Will's voice wavers out, and he pushes himself up into a sitting position, his hand reaching down to his leg. There's a piece of wood stuck into it, courtesy of the broken fence he just crashed into. Phil steps over a root in his way and immediately goes to kneel down in front of him. It, it just... I fell. Wilbur explains, staring wide-eyed at the injury. Phil holds lightly onto his ankle, as if telling him to not move. Huh. Don't touch it. Phil says lightly, trying to not let himself sound as panicked as he feels. He looks over his shoulder. Techno, go get Tommy for me. He's out playing in the dirt. Okay. Techno nods, staring at Wilbur for a few more worried seconds before quickly moving to do just that. I'm fine. Wilbur insists, ignoring Phil's advice and tugging at the broken piece of wood with a wince. It's just... it's tiny. Compared to everything else that's ever stabbed itself into Wilbur's leg, this is like a splinter. Just a stray accident. Wilbur? Phil warns, but Will yanks it out before Phil can stop him. And he throws it to the side right after. The wound begins to bleed a bit more freely, and Will covers it with his palm. All better, Wilbur says, like he's trying to convince them both. He looks up at Phil. It'll stop bleeding, in a bit. He tilts his chin up towards the clouds, like he's trying to ignore the injury and the blood against his skin. Phil clicks his tongue. Wilbur frowns. You can go back to gardening? Will offers, a bit of a nervous tilt in his words, as if Phil will be angry with him for being hurt. Phil doesn't know why he would ever think that. But, he supposes, that injury and blood had always had a negative connotation for Will. Injuries always meant hunters. Wounds always meant being slowed down, meant being caught. Phil's heart aches. The plants aren't going anywhere. Phil reassures, voice soft. Come here. Phil reaches out, taking Will's arm and tugging him forward. Will looks down at him with surprise, and Phil wraps an arm around Will's waist, pulling him out of the small wreckage he's made. Up, up, come on. Wilbur stumbles to quickly stand on his feet, but he's not standing for much more than a second before Phil picks him up off the ground entirely. He flails with the sudden move, throwing his arms around Phil's neck to be secure. Careful with the leg, Phil warns carrying Will with an arm around his middle and an arm underneath his knees. He looks down at Wilbur's leg and sees blood slowly finding its way down his ankle. It's fine, Wilbur repeats, readjusting his grip so that he's not digging his claws into Phil's shoulder, and rather just holding on. It only hurts a little. Aren't you brave? Phil responds and Wilbur blinks at him like he doesn't know what to make of that. Brave and strong. Huh? Phil laughs, Wilbur chuckling a bit in return. It's more confused than anything. All right, songbird, Phil says, turning around and taking Wilbur away from the broken fence. Let's go patch you up. But it doesn't hurt that bad, 
Will points out. I can walk. I want to carry you. Phil responds, and Wilbur's fingers dig into his shirt. And we should still clean it up anyhow. It won't take long, and we can come right back here once we're done. He adjusts Wilbur in his grip and makes his way across the garden, spotting Techno by the overgrown path with Tommy in his arms. The little one is entirely covered in dirt, and some of it has rubbed onto Techno, a smear of dirt on his cheek. Phil wants to clean it off with his sleeve, but he knows that's covered in dirt too. Is he okay? Techno asks, seeming worried by the fact Will's being carried rather than walking. Just a little scratch. Phil reassures, nodding his head for Techno to follow. We'll go fix it up at the house. Wilbur kicks his leg a bit, peeking over Phil's shoulder to look at Techno. Techno stares back, making a tiny smile. Do we have to clean it? Wilbur asks, still seeming a little confused. I can't just wipe it off. He tries to reach a hand out to his leg, and Phil gently pulls it back. You could, but then you'll get dirt in it and that wouldn't be comfortable. It wouldn't be, that's true. Wilbur knows what it's like to have dirt in his wounds. It'll still heal, he mutters. I want it to heal clean, with a bandage and everything. Phil's chin grazes over Will's head for a second, and Wilbur tilts his head up with a scrunched nose. He stares at the trees for a bit, listening to their footsteps against the forest floor and the sound of birds chirping off in the branches. Tommy's babbling away at Techno, Techno giving murmured responses that don't mean all that much. It's a calm mood, which means they should be acting calm. But instead, Phil's carrying him off to get healed, as if Wilbur's going to die or something. This feels unnecessary. Wilbur says underneath his breath, the words hardly a whisper. Phil hears it perfectly with how close he is. We're all home. Phil answers, and Will pauses with the kiss getting pressed against the side of his head. There's no more hunters, no more running, which means I get to spoil you a bit. Will jerks his head up, blinking slowly. Phil looks back at him with a smile. So that means bandages for tiny bleeding wounds. He declares, like it's now law, and Wilbur's going to have to follow it. A part of Wilbur wants to laugh, but he blinks again, pressing his lips tightly together as if to keep any words from spilling out. His eyes burn, and Phil's smile falters, then grows a little blurry. There's something in Wilbur's eyes. He blinks to get it out, and then finds tears running down his face. Oh, Wilbur says, for a realization that he's crying, and a realization that home means... It really does mean safety. It means love, and it means a happy life of being carefree. And Wilbur knew that. He knew that. He knew he was going to be okay, with Phil and Techno and Tommy at his side. But actually having it, actually living it, it's so much more. He... Phil rests his head over Will's back as Wilbur turns to hide his face into his shoulder, giving a quiet sob. You're okay. He slows his steps as the house comes into view and he turns his head over to Techno. Technoblade, go tell Bad to find the medkit. Should be somewhere in the kitchen, I hope. We'll be right there. Techno frowns at the sight of Wilbur, but he nods and heads off quickly with Tommy in his arms, making a beeline towards the front door. Phil watches him go, rubbing a hand over Will's spine and hearing him cry just beside his ear. It's all right. Phil murmurs, 
Wilbur's breath hitching as he sobs again. You're very brave, you know that. Wilbur wipes his face into Phil's shoulder, sniffling loudly. Took that splinter out without even flinching. Next time I'd rather you wait for me to do it, but you did good. Phil runs his fingers up through the back of Wilbur's curls, lightly pulling out a few tangles. You did so good. Wilbur cries, squeezing his arms around Phil with a pathetic noise. And Phil squeezes back, wrapping one wing forward and hiding his upper half underneath the feathers for a moment. They stand there in the shade by the tree line, Phil holding him close until Wilbur calms down enough to breathe. By the time he's finished sobbing, Bad is running out from the front porch, Skeppy hovering by the front door with Tommy in his arms. Techno's standing right behind him, hiding behind his legs. Is he all right? Bad calls, Phil walking his way over to meet him midway. Techno said he got hurt while you guys were in the garden. He fell into one of my old fences. Everything's kind of hidden away by the growth so he didn't see it and crashed right into it. Phil answers, stopping in front of Bad so he can take his look at Will. Got stabbed right in the leg. Oh, dear! Bad exclaims, Wilbur turning his head and peeking out towards the demon. That must have hurt. You feeling okay, Will? Wilbur sniffs, eyes flicking down at his leg. Yeah? Well, that's good. He leans down to look at Wilbur's leg. It doesn't seem too bad, so I think you'll heal up just fine. He smiles, looking unreasonably soft for someone with such an intimidating appearance. Phil smiles. That's the plan. Did you find the medkit? He asks, walking past Bad to head into the house. It was in one of the cabinets. It's pretty old, but everything was properly stored away in the box, so Skeppy just rinsed the dust off. Phil hums, stepping through the front door and heading straight for the kitchen, walking down the hall. Techno follows at his heels, his hand lightly grabbing onto the back of his feathers. We didn't see the fence, Techno says, trying to explain. We were just running and it's okay. Phil reassures putting Wilbur down on the counter and kissing him once on the forehead before moving his attention to get a towel so that he can wash the blood off. I should have warned you beforehand so you'd be careful. Lesson learned. You guys will be more cautious when playing in the garden, yeah? Both Techno and Wilbur nod, Wilbur wiping his sleeve against his face. Yeah. Phil nods with them and wets the towel he's found by the sink standing in front of Wilbur and lifting his leg up by the ankle. Let's see the damage here. He carefully pushes Wilbur's pants up, wiping off the blood that's run down to above his shoe. He cleans away whatever dirt and blood he finds, and as he keeps going up, he realizes he's not finding anything. He pauses. Wilbur, where did you get hurt? Phil asks, slowly. Wilbur frowns, his eyebrows scrunching against each other. On my leg? Point it out for me. Will leans forward on the counter, tugging at his pants and going to point where his injury is supposed to be. But then he stops, and he stares at his leg, looking confused. It was... it was right here. He points at a specific spot. Phil wipes over it carefully, and after a moment, he finds nothing underneath. He pokes a bit at the skin, looks closer, and faintly, very faintly, he can see a small mark, like a perfectly healed scab. But just as soon as he sees it, it's gone, faded in with the rest of Will's skin. Phil leans back. Well he says, looking up at Wilbur. That's curious. 